CataractCoach.com. Dense, brunescent, and white cataract. We're going to show you a complete case from start to finish. It's a tough one. The liquefied lens cortex has been absorbed, so the lens capsule contracts, and you see this gap between the iris and the cataract on your pre-op testing. So here we are in the operating room. There's the eye. We make our paracentesis. You can see this is clearly a very dense cataract. This patient has neglected having cataract surgery for many years. As a result, we have this very dense brunescent cataract, but also features of a white cataract. So we'll use tripan blue dye here to stain the anterior lens capsule. And now we're going to dilute that down with some anesthetics with preservative-free lidocaine that's been cut 50-50 with bounce salt solution. So that's a pretty good staining of the capsule. A little bit more dye leaks out from behind the iris. We'll do an exchange here and fill the eye with our dispersive viscoelastic. So that's a nice good fill. We see we have a good dilation as well. That's going to be important. We're going to make our main incision here. It's 2.4 millimeters using a steel keratome. That looks great. And now it's time for the capsular rexus. Important in a dense cataract, do not make a small capsular rexus. We need to have a sufficiently large one. So I want to aim for about a five to five and a half millimeter rexus. We grab the lens capsule and we start doing our rexus. There's the measurement. As we see, there's no milk that comes out. There is no intumescent nature to this cataract. There's no fluid that's coming out. The fluid that happened from the liquefied cortex has been absorbed over the last few years. As a result, this is just a dense cataract. There we go, nice, sufficiently round rexus. We can measure again. That's about five to five and a half millimeters, and it looks pretty round. Be very cautious with hydrodissection. You see, I first try to rotate without hydrodissection, then just do a bare minimum amount. You can't see the fluid waves go across, so you have to be very careful. Just do a little bit, and that's a sufficient rotation. That looks great. Be very cautious with the hydrodissection. A little more viscoelastic to protect the cornea. Now it's time for phaco. We're going to try to chop this nucleus. And it's going to be difficult to propagate the chop. Let me show you. Buzz in with the phaco probe. We place our chopper on the equator. And we bring them together. And we just can't get a full chop. It won't happen. Try again. So get a horizontal chop here. Buzz in. Chopper going around. There's that dense central endonucleus and still unable to really get a normal chop. So now we're going to have to resort to a more aggressive maneuver here. We're just getting the nucleus tilted on its side and really trapping that nucleus between the probe and the chopper, and we can exert a tremendous force to bring the two instruments together and then apart, and even then it's still not a complete crack. So this cataract is not just dense, it's fibrous, or leathery is sometimes an adjective people use to describe it. So the best move here is to just break off small pieces and just chip away at it. So here's one more small piece broken off, and then we can emulsify that. We're trying to operate at about the iris plane. So I'll buzz in again, and let's just break off a small piece. So we just do it systematically piece by piece. You can also do an SICS surgery, small incision cataract surgery, a manual extraction. Of course, that's going to require a much larger incision. This is a 2.4 millimeter incision. Doing SICS is going to require an incision that's many times larger. And for optimal results and best astigmatism, if you did the manual approach, you'd end up needing at least a stitch or two. So here we go. We've got about half the nucleus out, buzzing in again. And you can see the systematic approach is just taking our time. But we want to have that nucleus on its side, so then I can easily trap the nucleus between the phaco probe and the chopper, and I can exert a much higher force. In normal chopping, only the vacuum, the high vacuum of the phaco probe of five or 600 millimeters of mercury, that vacuum is what's holding the nucleus while the chopper disassembles the nucleus. So in here though, that's not enough because we need much more force than that just to try break this into pieces. I mean, look at the concerted effort we're doing here. So by trapping the piece of nucleus, this big nuclear piece between the probe and the chopper, now I'm holding it together with opposing forces, and the piece can't go anywhere. So I can have a much better and more forceful grip than if I just used the 500 millimeters of mercury vacuum. So that's the technique that we like to employ here. So almost done. There's the last densest piece 
of the endonuchus that comes out. There are a couple of big epinuclear pieces that are softer. Those come out pretty quickly and easily. There's that last one. And boy, what a difference. We finally have a red reflex. Also careful to make sure that we gave energy in bursts. And we're careful not to put too much energy in the eye. Of course, that damages the endothelium. But also, you can get a corneal wound burn. And of course, in this case, we're very careful and deliberate. And we avoided any of those issues. So removing the cortex here, there's not going to be a whole lot of cortex. So you know, a little bit of capsule polishing. Again, the, the best answer here is to be conservative. Very aggressive capsule polishing may damage this capsule. You can have areas of capsule that have been stained by that previously liquefied cortex. And you may not be able to remove all those tiny little opacities. That's okay. The central visual axis is very clear, and that's of no consequence. Let's fill our capsule bag here. In this patient, we're going to put a single-piece monofocal acrylic lens, hydrophobic one. In the pre-op examination, we were unable to use optical methods to determine the axial length, so we had to use an A-scan ultrasound. A little bit less accurate, but still in this case, we're able to get a pretty good result. There's the lens being placed in the capture bag, and we're going to adjust its position, make sure that it completely unfolds, and get both those haptics opened up. You'll also see that the capsule rex we created was just about perfect. It's about five, five and a half millimeters. We have complete overlap of the optic for 360 degrees. Now all that's left to do is go inside the eye, remove our viscoelastic, and we will finish up the case. I think it's important for younger surgeons and surgeons with less experience to see cases completed in their entirety. I know it's a full seven and a half minutes of your time, but I think it's an investment that's worth it to see that you can conquer even these very difficult cases very efficiently and very safely. And so we're going to try to feature more of these cases where we do a complete case, unedited, start to finish, to show you all the little details in every single step. Thank you for watching, and I hope you now have the confidence to tackle this type of cataract in the near future. If you want to learn even more, cataractcoach.com is our teaching website. You can join our free email list. They'll send you a new video every single day right to your inbox. Don't have to hunt for it. And it's a lot easier to search through these videos on cataractcoach.com than it is here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.